welcome to Cleveland Baptist Church this morning. It's good to have you here. If you're in the building, welcome. If you're watching online, welcome also. It's also good this morning to welcome a good friend of ours, uh, Gary Woodall, um, our regional minister. He's going to be leading the service for us this morning and giving us, um, bringing us God's word and also leading us in communion. As you're probably aware, today is a special day for all the fathers. It's Father's Day, and at the start of this service, we're going to remember our God, our Father, who is ever faithful. Father God, we thank you for your faithfulness and your fatherly care of each one of us here this morning. We thank you for those moments when you put your arms around us and just remind us that we're your child. Reluctantly, we also say thank you for those times when you tap us on the shoulder and sit us down and you have those straight conversations when we're not just in that right place. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, you love us so much, you do that. So at the beginning of our service, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for who you are and what you mean to us. In Jesus' name, amen. 
As Ian mentioned, today is Father's Day. When we say thank you to God, either for our biological fathers or our spiritual fathers or our stepfathers, or those who have shown us fatherly care around us. Today is a bit of a, a strange day for me because I am thankful for my dad, although I lost my dad earlier on this year. When I was younger, people used to look at me and say, you look just like your dad. That was fine. He had dark hair most of his life, uh, a full of head of hair and very thin. As time's gone on, uh, they still kept saying, you look like your dad. When he's bored and got a bit of a tummy on him, I'm not sure if that was such a compliment. But on Father's Day, for some of us, we'll look back with sadness, but with thanksgiving. Other of us today will be just truly thankful for those around us who've shown such fatherly care. To help us focus and help us to have some direction today, we're going to watch a video from Homes for Good on those fatherly, fatherly figures that are in scripture for us. Dear Mordecai, here's to you on Father's Day. You cared for Esther as if she were your own daughter. You committed to her and helped her see her place in God's purpose. Happy Father's Day to you and to all who encourage children to reach their full potential. Dear David, here's to you on Father's Day. You made space at your table for Mephibosheth and welcomed him into your home. You assured him that he mattered and made sure he was cared for throughout his life. Happy Father's Day to you and to all who make space for those society often shut out. Dear Prophets, here's to you on Father's Day. You had the courage to call out injustice. You spoke up for the poor, the oppressed and the vulnerable. You pushed for change and you brought a message of hope. Happy Father's Day to you and to all the thinkers, speakers, writers and doers pursuing justice and influencing change. Dear Joseph, here's to you on Father's Day. You stood by Mary and loved and raised Jesus as your son. Happy Father's Day to you and to every dad, stepdad, granddad, foster dad and guardian who are raising children with love. Dear Jairus, here's to you on Father's Day. You went to great lengths to help your daughter when she was sick. You ran to seek help from Jesus, refusing to give up even when those around you said it was too late. Happy Father's Day to you and to all who choose hope where others see hopelessness. Dear Paul, here's to you on Father's Day. You are a spiritual father to Timothy, a mentor, and you pointed him to Jesus. You helped him lead others. Happy Father's Day to you and to every teacher, mentor, youth worker and coach who are helping others to grow. Here's to you all on Father's Day. You are making. Let's pray together, shall we? Let's pray. Loving Father God, we thank you for Father's Day and for all those raising children with love, like Joseph who stood by Mary and loved and raised Jesus as his own son. In Jairus, who went to great lengths to help his daughter, refusing to give up even when those around him said it was too late. We thank you for this Father's Day, for those close to us who model that same love. Thank you for every dad, stepdad, granddad, foster dad, guardian, we ask that you'll strengthen and uphold each one and grant them and guide and give them grace to nurture the children in their care. Encouraging God. We thank you this Father's Day for all those who encourage children and young people to reach their full potential. Like Mordecai, who cared for his cousin Esther as, she was, as if she was his daughter committed to her and helping her to see her place and her purpose. And Paul, who was a spiritual father and mentor for Timothy. Thank you this Father's Day for the teachers and the mentors, the youth workers, the classroom assistants, the coaches, 
and others who inspire and lead and cheer us on. We pray that you will inspire and fuel their passion as leaders. We you surround them with the support and bless their critical work as they have work with their children and young people. Welcoming Father, thank you for this Father's Day, for those in our community, our nation, and our world who pursue justice and influence change. We thank you for King David, who made space at his table from Epiphibosheth and welcomed him to his own home, assuring him that he mattered and ensuring that he was cared for. And for the prophets who called the church to care for the vulnerable, the lonely, the oppressed, and the marginalized. We thank you this Father's Day for all those who make space for those on the edge. Thank you for those in our community who show hospitality and inclusion. And for those making an impact as thinkers, speakers, writers, leaders, and decision makers. We pray for your wisdom and guidance in their work. May they be filled with passion and driven by hope. God our Father, thank you that as your adopted sons and daughters, we can know you as a perfect Father, Abba. As we remember those who made a difference, we also lift up to you those whom Father's Day is difficult. We ask that you draw near to those who have broken relationships with a father figure, those who are missing a father figure, or waiting for a father figure, or longing to be a father figure. May they know your comfort and your peace. As your beloved children, we're called to reflect your heart. Help us to follow you and show your love, encouragement, and welcome to those around us. Use us to make a difference as we reflect your heart, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.
Father, we ask that you'll send your Holy Spirit, open our minds, soften our hearts, that we may respond to your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. There are times often when you prepare a message to speak to people when actually you preach the message to yourself. And I found that in preparing today, being given the theme of thankfulness in prayer. To be absolutely honest, when I sat down a few weeks ago and began to work through this, that sense of thankfulness and joy was not my experience at that point in time. My mind was just going over 101 things that I was involved in, and I was thinking of worst-case scenarios for each one of them. Have you ever been in that? Where your mind just can't get out of that circle, and everything you looked at seemed to be, oh, it's going to be awful. And I had this amazing email, and it was from one of the ministers in our network. I normally don't get an email from him, interesting enough. And he just sent an email and said, Gary, just been praying today, just wanted to let you know, praying for you, and upholding you in prayer. You know that Bible passage? The joy of the Lord is our strength. And as I sat down and I started to pray, and I started to give thanks to God again, that, that joy came back, that, that strength came back in, in my own Christian life. The reason I want to share that simple story about my life today is it's very easy to stand up here and to speak to you here in this room and you on camera and make you feel guilty about being thankful. But I want to encourage you this morning and not to feel guilty this morning. The joy of the Lord can, will, can be and will be our strength. One Christian leader wrote to his workers and said this, for people to be sustained in Christian life and service for decades requires that they know two things, that the Lord Jesus Christ is both true and wonderful, that the Christian faith is both true and wonderful. Once you know that, the joy of the Lord is your strength. If you lose that, it changes everything. Kipling was known for his words and his books. And at the time, he was earning uh, about 10 shillings per word that he wrote. Now, quick mathematicians amongst us will work out and I used a computer instead to tell me it was six pounds 24 per word that he ever wrote at that time. A group of students actually got quite annoyed with all his writing. So they wrote a letter to him and said, Dear Mr. Kipling, can you tell us your favourite word and here's 10 shillings? So he kindly wrote back with one word. And the word he put on this page was, thank you. I think this is similar to what Paul writes here in Philippians. So if you have a Bible, it may be helpful for you to turn to the passage. Philippians chapter 4 says this, Rejoice in the Lord always, in verse 4. I say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What Paul says here is, is try to Eliminate the negatives here and start to focus on the positives. It, it will change the way you view things and the way you see things. Before we carry on, I need to say that this was true for Paul. <laughs> this was no theory. This was no sermon to everybody else. This is what he lived himself. 
We're told about Paul's attitudes in, in, in Acts chapter 16. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. <laughs> this must have been one of the most miserable times in the whole of Paul's life. He was in prison, damp, dark, smelly, and he started to sing to God. And his heart was changed. It's true that there are times to lament, isn't there? And there is true there's times for sadness and there's times for crying. But what Paul wanted to say to these groups of Christians here is that sometimes we have to take control of our thinking and our minds and we need to start to focus on who God is and what he's done for us. And it will make all the difference for us, for the joy of the Lord will be our strength. So you've got the passage there in Philippians. Go to chapter 1 and let's see how he works this out. So what Paul does here, he looks at the past, the present and the future. His thankfulness for the past. I thank my God every time I remember you, he prays. <laughs> it's full of memories of gratitude and thanksgiving for, for the people, for who, what God has done. He could have referred back to the hardships and the difficulties and the sadness for the way they be acted and behaved, and, but he didn't. He chose to focus on the good things. He didn't focus on being falsely arrested or kept in prison or being, living in dirty squalor conditions, being humiliated, all the injustices he finds himself. Later on in the passage, it says, Paul, forget what is past. H hang on a minute before we run on too quickly. Forget what is, th those negative of the things of the past. Hold on to the blessings and remember what God has done. You see, we have a choice, don't we? We have a choice to focus on the negatives or we have a choice to focus on the positives. As a pastor, I meet all sorts of different types of people. I remember sitting down with one person who said, God's given me a, a, a gift of criticism. And I sort of looked at them, hmm, interesting gift. I don't find that in scripture. Other people sit down with me and, and they tell me their woes. And every time I sit down with them, they tell me their woes. And I ask myself sometimes, where's the joy of the Lord in your life? You see, we have a choice to focus on the past of the hurts, and there will be, the disappointments that come along, and that's part of life. Even amongst a Christian community, all of those things will be there. Or we could choose to look to the past and remember God's blessings, those individuals God's brought along in our lives that's transformed us and enabled us to, to discover something more about being Christ-like in all that we do. Imagine if Paul wrote this type of letter. Dear fellow believers, I can't help remembering how miserable it was to be in this damp, mouldy prison. I still wake up at night with the stench of the other prisoners. And just the condition of this place, the unjust of it, of it all, still burns in me, in the core of me, as I languish here in Rome in prison for doing what's good. It's truly a rotten world, and hell is too good 
for the scum who've treated me this way. That's the way Paul could have written, isn't it? Because that was his reality. That's what he was experiencing. That was what everything around him said he should think. That was authentic. But Paul looked back in the past instead and let go of the hurts and the heartache and said, thank you, God. Thank you for giving me strength when I was weak. Thank you for bringing those Christians alongside me when I just felt I was so alone. Thank you, Lord, for never abandoning me when others walked away. I don't know what goes on in the computer banks of your mind. What's the default mode within you? Is it the negatives? Or is it the positive? You see, we need to be those joy-filled Christians who remember all that God has done. Listen to what he says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lowly, whatever it is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So when he looked back, he was thankful for God, for all that God has done. But he also was thankful for the present. Look at verse, chapter 1 and verse 7 to 8. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I'm in change or defending and con- confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God has testified how I long for all of you with affection and Jesus of Jesus Christ. You see, the, the same principle happens here. Do, do I look at the negatives or do I look at the positives? Although he was unfairly in prison, unjustly imprisoned, what he focused on here was the presence of the Christian believers. But hang on a minute, Gary. He was in this stinky, smelly prison cell. How how can he talk about partners in the gospel in this letter? How can he talk about his friends around him? But that's what he did. Because he saw in the present situation, actually, I need the support of other Christians around me. I, I need the support of other brothers and sisters in Christ around me. Notice he says, in all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from this day until now. (laughs) Even though he was in a prison cell, he didn't feel alone. Even though the Christians weren't near him, he knew that they were partners in the gospel with him. That, that thankfulness comes often through a relationship with other people, doesn't it? As with me, as I shared at the start of this sermon, the email I had from a minister that I don't often have a, 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 an email from, it, it, it just changed it. We were partners at that point. That there was something that God has spoken to him that he was speaking into my life. You see, thankfulness is relational. How does God often bless us? He often blesses through the other. (laughs) You can remember back, I'm sure, as I can, to where God's just blessed me just by bringing the right person along or that person speaking or that person giving. Actually, without even you thinking about it, you are a blessing to those around you that moment you said something to somebody, which was a passing remark, to them it was a God moment. That moment when you actually shown an act of kindness to a brother and sister in Christ, it was just something you do, isn't it? But for them, it was a God moment. 
You, you can look at some of those things either with negative or, or positive eyes. I, I quite like the, the a quite famous Jewish story about a rabbi who sat down with well, a person from the synagogue and Isaac turns to the rabbi and tells him, Rabbi, I, I'm in debt. I owe 50 pounds and I don't know how to pay it back. And the rabbi tells him, Isaac, trust the Lord with all your heart and all your soul. He will help you out. And Isaac leaves. And the rabbi sat there and thought, I don't have much, but I need to help Isaac out. So the next time he sees Isaac, he goes over to him and he hands him uh, an envelope with the 25 pounds that he had left in his own pocket. Isaac this is from God for you. Isaac gets home, opens the envelope, pulls out the 25 pounds, sits down and prays, Father God, thank you for the money you sent, but next time, don't send it through that cheating, robbing rabbi. I needed 50 and he kept 25 for himself. It's a stupid story, but often that's the way we feel, isn't it? But that's not what Paul felt in the present situation. He said, I thank God every time I think of you for, for your generosity and your goodness. He, he talks later on in the letter about the way they actually gave to him. But most of all, he wasn't so concerned about the cash, the, the, the good things. He was just thankful for the people they were. Thank God for who you are. I wonder, I wonder in those quiet moments of life, do you sit down and do you focus your thoughts on Christians or in church who've hurt you or those who have blessed you? And do you know what? You have a choice to make at that point in time. You can choose to be thankful and grateful or you could choose to focus on the negatives. I know it's easier said than done, but it is a choice of ours. So Paul here is thankful for the past. He's thankful for the present. And he also is thankful for the future. Every direction he looks He's a man of thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I know I'm in prison, but thank you, Lord. I know people are looking down at me. I, I just thank you, Lord, that you, you, I'm special to you. I know I feel alone, but I thank you, Lord, that I've got others who are walking with me in the gospel. And thank you, Lord, for the future, because everything is going to be completed here. What does he say in verse 6? Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I find this quite amusing, really, because as he looked at the church, oh boy, oh boy, didn't he have to sort some mess out? <laughs> but it's okay, because as I look to the future, you're going to be complete, and I'm going to be complete, he says, and we're going to be made perfect in Christ. Can I just encourage you as Christians? We don't hear many sermons about heaven these days, do we? <laughs> we talk about the here and the present and knowing God now. Actually, there is a great future ahead. And as I look at you and as you look at me, we can truly be sitting here and say, thank you, Lord, that they're going to be changed. <laughs> They're going to become more and more like Jesus Christ, and they're going to become complete in everything. And when we get to heaven, Lord, wow, isn't it going to be fantastic? Because we're going to be just like you want us to be. Being confident of this, as he says, that he who began a good work in you will complete it, bring it to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. I'll be complete 
you'd be complete. Where's your thankfulness monitor this morning? Is it in the, the blue, the cold, the negative? Oh, woe me. Is it red hot? Oh, Lord, everywhere I look and everything I see, past, present, if you, it's just, I just want to thank you. Or where are you somewhere in the middle of all of this? Let me just encourage you to face the reality that you're living in, but also have the God perspective that Paul had. How could God use a man like this? I'll I tell you how he used a man like this. Because Paul focused and gave thanks to God. That's where his strength came from. That's where the blessing of God comes from. I encourage you, either at home or here, just to close your eyes at the moment. Is that okay? And I just want to encourage you just to say thank you to God. On purpose, direct your thinking this morning. Maybe it's keeping going back over that cycle of being anxious. Maybe those things of the past of the hurts and the people keep coming to your mind. But do what Paul did. Lord, thank you. Remember those things. Remember those people. Remember those moments. Thank you, Lord, for saving me.
praise and thank you, Lord Jesus, the one whose love cannot and will not be contained. We're so thankful for what you've done in our lives, for meeting us and transforming us, for being present with us at times when we felt alone. Thank you, Lord, for working behind the scenes when all that we could see is catastrophe, for strengthening us when we've been so aware of our weakness. Love that will not be contained, love that will not give up on us, love that will journey into the darkest places, even the grave, to find us. Lord, we thank you. We thank you so very, very much, Lord. Amen. Jesus shared all kinds of meals in all kinds of homes. In the places where people live and surrounded by the clutter of the everyday. So we ask this morning... Come, living Jesus, be our guest here in our home. Come, living Jesus, be our host here at this table. Here is bread, broken as the body of Christ was broken, as the heart of God was broken, as the seal of the tomb was broken, broken to make us whole. The body of Christ was broken for us. Here is wine. A cup that brings us together, even in our social distancing. A cup of forgiveness and blessing. The blood of Christ poured out for you. Come, Holy Spirit, pour out your blessing on bread and wine, on us, your people, today. Eat and drink, and drink with thanksgiving, Jesus said. Thank you, Lord, for loving me.
Jesus, one day you will mind every word. The former thing shall not pass away, no more tears. One day you'll make sense of it all. Jesus, one day. Start left behind, no more fear. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be! When we all see Jesus, we'll sing. thankful for God for the past, for the way he met with us and transformed us. We thank the Lord for the present, for the people that he brings alongside us. And we look and give thanks to the future, that everything will be made right. I was planning to end our service with everyone shouting out something they want to be thankful for but I'm not allowed to. But one day, one day, we'll see Jesus face to face. So we thank you, Lord, for who you are, the God who doesn't change, even though our circumstances change. The God who's ever-present, the God who's all-powerful, the God who is all-knowing, we give you thanks today. Lord, Renew our strength and may your joy be our strength today and tomorrow and this week and in the difficult conversations and the difficult times and the hardship of times 
May your joy be our strength, Lord, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.